Welcome everyone to Love Angel, insights from an ADHD polyamorous veteran entrepreneur, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary stories of entrepreneurs who have overcome unique challenges and build successful businesses. I'm your host, Angel Dash, an ADHD polyamorous army veteran turned entrepreneur. My focus is to normalize love, life, and business and how they all contribute to one another. So if you like real conversation, a little bit of sass, and a whole lot of guidance, stick around. You might just gain a new perspective. Welcome back to Love Angel, business insights from an ADHD poly veteran entrepreneur. Just a little warning for those just joining in. This is not your normal business podcast, as you could probably tell by the title. I'm real, I'm honest, and I'm a little spicy. (laughs) Now, let's dive into the good stuff. The nitty gritty of how my military adventure turned business journey can sprinkle a bit of magic into your entrepreneurial dreams. So, buckle up. So, imagine being this fresh-faced private, E3 tossed into the wilds of Afghanistan just 45 days after finishing my MOS training. And for those of you who don't know, uh, that's military occupational specialty training. Um, Just for my muggles out there who, you know, told you I was a nerd. Anyway, um, 45 days, right? Wild, fucking wild. Um, I remember signing into my unit after MOS training And, um, when I signed into my new unit, they were looking over my name and they're like, oh, well, you're, you're going to be deployed in 45 days. And I'm like, what? Are are you, are you serious? You're not talking about me. I'm just a baby. (laughs) Um, I, I was 18 at the time. If I remember correctly. Yeah, I was 18. Um, and just hearing those words of you're going to be deployed was terrifying. Um, you know, I don't think it actually hit me until probably later that night. Um, and I just remember calling my mom and my dad and was like, so I'm, I'm going to be deployed in about 45 days and, um, I'm going to be fine. I got this. I'm a total badass. (laughs) Uh, because when you're 18, you know, you can take on the world and, uh, nobody's going to stop you. (laughs) So, um, I just, I remember that. Um, I also remember my grandfather, uh, my dad's dad calling me and telling me how much he loved me and that he hopes that I come back safely. And, um, I don't think at the time I realized it, but I feel like maybe that was a goodbye at the time, just in case. Um, which is kind of scary to think about. (laughs) So that was, um, that was scary and hard. And, you know, you're, you're used to one thing when, you know, you're a kid, you're used to doing all the running around and being a kid and going to the movies and, you know, you don't want to stay in this small town. So you decide that the only way to get out is to join the military. Um, because you don't have money to go to college. You don't have money to go to university. Um, and so you decide, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to join the military and that's, that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to get out of this, this small little town. And you go in and you do your basic training and then you do your MOS training. And so you're, you're traveling, you're, you're exploring the world outside of your tiny little town. And then when you get to where you think is your final destination and they tell you, well, now you're going into a combat zone. That's scary. That's, you know, completely world turning. Um, And I just remember being scared and not knowing who I could really talk to because I felt like as a, as a woman specifically, if I were to say I was scared, it would come off like, well, why, why the fuck did you join the military? Why are you here? This is a man's world. Um, and so I wanted to, to be that, you know, I'm, I'm a badass and, and I can do this all by myself and I'm not scared. I got this. I'm prepared. Um, but being honest, like I was terrified. (laughs) 
I was absolutely scared. But those days turned out to be my boot camp for life's challenges, setting me up for a wild ride in the world of business. And I don't regret it. Not one bit. Uh, the military didn't just teach me how to polish my boots. <laughs> Typically, that was only for our blues anyway. Um, but it hammered in discipline. And guess what? That discipline is like a superhero cape in my entrepreneurial adventures. Whether I'm making a split decision or keeping my focus laser sharp as a CEO, it's all thanks to those military vibes. The, the things that I went through, the experiences that I had, and it's... I don't regret it. Not one bit, right? So picture this. <laughs> Mission planning in the military is like a um, superhero team up of business strategies, right? It's all about meticulous preparation. If you're not prepared on a mission, people can get hurt. Um, and unfortunately, I was one of those. When you're preparing for a mission, you need to make sure that you have all of the equipment. You need to make sure that everyone is good to go, that everyone has the things that they need, that the vehicles have the things that they need, that um, in short, all the things that you need are lined up in a row and you are dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's, making sure everyone's taken care of. Um, and that is very important when it comes to mission readiness and that also stems into business strategies. So if you're not prepared, military or business, <laughs> um, things can go awry and it can be detrimental to you, to your team, to those around you, to bystanders, to innocents. And I know that a lot of people are like, well, Angel, this is, this is business. But It's the same, at least in my opinion. You have a launch coming up, right? Um, you don't plan for this launch. You just decide, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do the launch, and my team is just gonna gonna go with it. But what some people don't realize is that your team has family. Your team has a life. Your team has things that are going on outside of your business. And those are things that you have to keep in mind and you have to be prepared for whenever you're doing a launch, when it comes to business, right? So that brings me into teamwork. The teamwork in the military, I mean, that's camaraderie right there. Most veterans will literally bond over the fact that they're a veteran. Most. Some people won't. It, I mean, it comes down to preference. <laughs> But more often than not, people, especially veterans, will bond over the fact that they were in the military, that they went through the bullshit, right? I have a friend of mine, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine, that I consider more like family, whom I met in the military, and we bonded over some bullshit, <laughs> and we've been in each other's lives for over a decade. She has seen me at my worst. She's seen me at my lowest points. And has still cheered me on over time. She's still an amazing part of my life and somebody I cherish dearly. She's always been there time and time again. And those are the kind of bonds that you build. Um, but that can also happen in business. And when you have things that have happened that are monumental um, in business, that's where things evolve, right? So let's make this a little bit more practical. What can you take away from, from everything um, that I briefly just talked about, right? Well, um, I'll tell you some ninja moves inspired by my military background that you can throw in your entrepreneurial toolkit. One, the first thing, First and foremost, um, roll with the punches. And I have mixed feelings about this one, but I do think that it's worth mentioning. Um, just like in the military, plans don't always go as planned. Um, Murphy's Law. <laughs> if everything is going as planned, something's going wrong. <laughs> 
So you want to embrace the change, do a little dance with unpredictability, and don't forget to laugh when things get crazy. Rolling with the punches, you're also allowed to be able to hold the space for not being okay with the fact that everything just went to shit. And that's okay. That's all right. The second one, because I'm old school, I guess, um, lead with swagger. Military training is like the ultimate crash course in leadership, right? Whether you're leading a squad or a startup team, clear communication, quick decision-making, and a sprinkle of charisma will have you leading with swagger. Making a decision, whether it's a good decision or a bad decision, it doesn't matter. You made a decision. That's, that's huge. A lot of people will hold back and not make a decision because they're worried about making the wrong one. When in reality, if you make a decision, that's huge. That's more than anybody can say that they've done because they made the decision. Now, if they made a bad decision, sure. Do, they, do you learn from it? Of course. But that's part of life. You can't sit here and hold up on the fact that you are like, you know what, I, can't, I, I don't know if I should make a decision. I don't want to make a decision. I'll let you make the decision. Like, I've been a decision maker most of my life. Um, and there's been times where now in my life, um, I don't want to always be the decision maker. <laughs> um, there's times where I'm like, I'm telling my partners, like, I, I can't. I can't make a decision today. I am so burnt out from whatever I was doing that I am, I'm like, okay, you, you know what, here, here is, here is the thing that I want you to do. I want you to make the decision because I can't fucking do it. That's making a decision. I decided that I can't make a decision on the topic that we are talking about. And that's putting the decision in somebody else's hands because that's also making a decision. That's what a leader is. That's what somebody else does. And other leaders that are also in my household Turn around and be like, okay, you can't make the decision. Well, you know what? Here is three different things that we could do. Or here is three other options that we have. And it's like, okay, you know what? I choose that one. So having the ability to be able to say, I can't make a decision right now is still a decision. Making a decision is better than not making one at all because you're moving forward. You're taking that step. You're, you know, you're moving the needle forward a little bit more in your business or a little bit more in your life, wherever that decision is, wherever you're trying to go. So the last thing, the third thing, if you will, bounce back like a rubber ball. I laugh about this one because my maiden name is Ball. And while I was in the military, my last name was Ball. Most of it, for the most part. Um, and I, man, I got some shit for it. <laughs> um, imagine being a private with the last name Ball. That's, that's funny. <laughs> um, entrepreneurship is a roller coaster. When you hit a bump or three, you have to bounce back like a rubber ball. You have to view your setbacks as your own personal trampoline for success. And I get it. That doesn't mean that you don't experience the pain. That doesn't mean that you don't cry about it. That doesn't mean that you don't get mad about it. That doesn't mean that, you know, whatever the setback is, you're not absolutely like infuriated by it. Feel the pain. Feel that emotion because that's important too. You want to be able to experience the pain because then you can get up and you can move on. A winner is only a loser that tried one more time. I literally heard that like two days ago and I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Okay. I'm done. I'm done bitching and crying about this issue. Now I'm going to move on. Now I'm going to, you know, take steps to move on or move past it or move to the next thing. 
the fourth thing that I kind of want to throw in there that I've been bouncing back and forth with and, and talking about in conjunction with the other ones is the emotions. Whoever you are, he, she, they, them, the they's and the gays, the, the, the he's, the she's, it doesn't matter who you are. Feel the emotion. And sometimes it fucking sucks. <laughs> I can say that from personal experience. You know, I, I buried trauma for decades. <laughs> um, but feeling the emotion allows you to experience what you've been holding back. Feeling the emotion allows you to have a different perspective, to be able to be angry about what, this certain situation that's happening, or be sad about the certain situation, or, you know, complete opposite, being, being happy about whatever it is that's going on in your life, in your partner's life, in, you know, a family member or, or a colleague. But feeling that emotion, is what makes us human. And what make, it's what makes us authentic. It's what makes us us. And that's important. That's so important to who you are. And you yourself, you are important in this life. So as I wrap up today's episode, I want, I want you to remember the journey from soldier to CEO is not just a narrative, but it's a profound exploration of how military experiences can shape a successful entrepreneurial path. But I also want you to keep in mind that everyone, everyone comes from somewhere. So no matter what your background is, no matter what you're doing with your life now, if you have a dream, then go for it. Take steps to move forward with your dream. Even if they're small ones, even if it's just, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I'm going to take this hour and I'm going to, you know, do this thing for my business, or I'm going to do this thing for my dream, or I'm going to do this thing where I plan my, my dream trip. And I start to save a little bit at a time, whatever the case may be. If it's your dream, then go for it. Remember, you've got this. All right, you beautiful badasses. Remember to be authentically you. Until next time, love angel.